Jake Ludington here at OpenStack Days in Seattle, and I'm here with Steve Tegler from VMware. And I noticed that you guys have kind of uh, gone all in on OpenStack in a way that I wouldn't have expected because it doesn't seem like VMs and OpenStack necessarily go together. Yeah, so uh, we get that a lot where, you know, what's VMware doing at an OpenStack uh, conference or summit? And uh, there is a lot of misconceptions around uh, VMware as a technology being competitive at OpenStack, and that's absolutely not the case. Um, you know, if you think about it, a fundamental tenet of OpenStack is that it, you can choose the virtual or physical infrastructure underneath. And uh, so what we basically say is all of our virtual infrastructure, so that being vSphere, ESX, or sorry, vSphere, uh, NSX, and our storage uh, with vSAN or just our generic data stores will work underneath an OpenStack framework. Because um, if you think about it, OpenStack does not dictate what uh, infrastructure you use, right? The fundamental tenet, again, is you have a choice of infrastructure. So with OpenStack being very open source and anybody can go download and get the code, why would they use VMware's deployment versus any of the other options? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's two things. I'll be perfectly clear. Um, if you have a, your own OpenStack distribution, you can pick and choose VMware technology. Like maybe you need a network solution. You can pick and choose NSX and use it in your own distribution or a distribution of your choice. We you know, upstream all the plugins and drivers, so those are all available. But if you say that you know vSphere looks like a good technology, I'm familiar with that technology uh, in my data center. I'm already using it. Uh, NSX, you know, proven, uh, proven track record, five years uh, in the market with OpenStack with our plugins and whatnot. If you say, you know what, those two are, are a really good solution for me. Uh, we also have a distribution which natively plugs in to those uh, technologies. And uh, really what that does, uh, our distribution um, is, uh, it's free. Uh, there's a nominal cost for support. It's like $200 a socket list for the support on the distribution. But if you have vSphere, you're entitled to go download it, start using it today. So could somebody also use KVM side by side with your OpenStack deployment? We, we definitely get that uh, question uh, quite frequently. And uh, so the one thing with our distribution is that we basically fix the infrastructure uh, that you can use under the covers, namely uh, vSphere, NSX, and any VMware data store that's supported. So any storage platform supported in VMware, uh, vSphere is supported here. Um, and in effect, um, by doing that, it brings overall stability to the market. The evil word is snowflake, right? We see, I see, I've been involved with a lot of OpenStack deployments that are unique snowflakes, and it's inevitably very difficult. So, so basically only, only the team that built it can figure out how to fix that, it. That's right. If someone from the team leaves or whatnot, it's, it's, it's really tough. Uh, not to mention if you do buy support on that distribution and you're unique versus anyone else, um, boy, that person on the other end of the phone is going to have to figure out what's unique about your environment. So getting back to your core question, so if we fix the virtual infrastructure that you need to use under the covers, um, that basically ensures upgrade processes, patching. We have customers do OpenStack upgrades on their own. Um, and, and so if you ask me to use KVM or configure KVM, you undermine a core philosophy, which is let's fix the architecture, the framework of OpenStack in terms of its configuration, because when we do that, we make all these upgrades and patching and troubleshooting and everything very deterministic. So in a way, you could kind of think of it as um, maybe not having like 20 different server configurations in your data center and, that is, and, and ruling out all of the guesswork. That that, that's that. exactly right. You can almost think of it as uh, maybe configuration management. Like today, if I have a Linux host and um, I spin it up and I want it configured the same way every time you use something uh, like Chef or Puppet or Ansible to make sure it's configured the same way. Uh, in effect, we use Ansible to deploy OpenStack. So we are ensured that it's deployed the exact same way every, every single time in, our, in a reference architecture. So I get that, but um, doesn't that create possibly the, the perception of vendor lock-in yeah. tied, tied to VMware? <laughs> Usually when I'm doing a 101 level presentation, I definitely get that question or I preempt it because I know it's out there, it's in people's heads. You know, if you think about it, where is um, the lock-in, right? Um, if, there, if there is such a thing. Um, really, when you think about it, OpenStack uh, and the fact that it has a vendor neutral API, this is the thing the developers and the developer tools inter are interacting with. That is what you, gives you the abstraction in terms of technology choice. So if you said, I want to go with VMware initially because I have vSphere knowledge and maybe NSX and whatnot, I deploy your stack. Later on, a year or two years later, you go, you know what? I don't like VMware for one reason or another. Um, I can deploy someone else's OpenStack distribution and provided they're DEF Core compliant like us, 
uh, you can basically swing their tools over to that other distribution and start using, using that. And that's what gives you the, the vendor independence at that layer. I, I personally believe that it's very difficult to manage at the plug-in and driver level because it adds so much complexity to that system. So really you guys are kind of viewing this as a way for people to have predictability and, and lower their overall support costs. Uh, exactly, right. You know, another thing we get is, so how many people do you have working on OpenStack at VMware? And uh, the interesting thing is, you know, we've got, uh, you know, a couple dozen uh, folks in engineering working on uh, supporting OpenStack trunk, right, and, and publishing fixes and whatnot. But if you think about our entire OpenStack cloud, that's not only the OpenStack framework, that's vSphere, that's NSX, that's vSAN, and the amount of engineering and product management and support wrapped around that, you know, that's, that's our entire company. I say that's, that's all of VMware. That, that's all of VMware. So how much support do we have? We've got quite a bit, if you're talking about the entire stack and not just, you know, the OpenStack framework. Well, it sounds like um, maybe a, a short way to sum this up is um, OpenStack plus VMware is maybe better together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. So we, we have had uh, quite, a bit, uh, quite a bit of success uh, in the market um, uh, with folks like Nike, who was on stage at VMworld this year, talking about how they use it in production. And the, the one thing I got to be clear is, so VMware integrated OpenStack, that's the distribution. Um, and then we've obviously got our infrastructure underneath. Um, some like to say that they're running VIO for their production workloads. I would argue their production workloads are just running on vSphere and NSX. OpenStack is merely provisioning those. So it's completely abstracted in that sense. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Jake.